Hello everyone, it's Marie again from Skeletorama. Welcome back to my channel. Come at Hauschiff. How is everybody? Um, Hami Ski, I'm so tired from my job, so it's been it's been a minute since I did a video, so sorry about that. It's definitely been a minute since we played with the journal, so I'm gonna try to do a journal and a miniatures one to go up in the same day because I know some people are here for one, some people are here for the other, that's fine. Um, I like to do both, so I can't help it. But um, anyways, we're going to work in the Ireland Journal today. So I'm going to take my little tassel off here. Because I do love it, but yeah, they do kind of get in the way um, when you're trying to work on it. So we are doing this. Um, we've put, you know, a few pockets in. We've done a couple things in here. The last thing I believe we did were these pockets, which came out so cool. I love these. So now it's time to do some more stuff and play with some more of the ephemera that comes in the kit. So I think we may do more than one thing. Not going to promise it because we know how long it takes me to do stuff. So um, if this isn't running over into ridiculous time territory, we may do other stuff. But the one thing I do want to do today are these. <clears throat> so this is it's kind of like a page decoration. It's made out of book page. Um, you can put it on a page, you can make it for the cover, you can do whatever you want with it, but um, I think we're going to do it as like a, a page decoration, you know, for maybe one of these pages. Uh, the mulberry paper is very pretty, but it's not very heavy, so it, it can't take a lot of weight on it of stuff. But this is nice and light, so this could go here and make this look extra pretty and, and leave room for writing or, or what have you. So we're going to do these. Um, these are inspired by a video that I saw on Graphic 45's channel, um, and it was Janice Zate, I believe her name was. I'll, I'll leave the link to her YouTube in the description area thing, as well as to the actual video that I saw. It. And she was doing a mini album, which is very standard for, for Graphic 45 stuff, and, and you know, you cover them. Usually they're very neat and tidy, and you know, everything's very precise. Um, she did hers a little more like a junk journal style thing and there was lots of texture and stuff. And this is one of the things she did, um, is she took the book page and she tore it into four and then made them the size that she wanted and, and gave it extra texture and stuff. So that's what we're going to do today. So I've got these, I've got some book page here. So I went ahead and used, um, pages from Gulliver's Travels because number one, it's one of the, the book, the text blocks that I have you know, that I, that I pull pages from. But number two, of course, Jonathan Swift, who wrote it, is from Ireland, so it, it fits. Um, so we've got the pages here. We have some of the ephemera from the kit, and I do keep mine in these little glassine bags, kind of by size-ish, while I'm working on them, just to sort of to help, because sometimes I want to do something with, with little small ones. Sometimes I want to do something with large ones, that way I don't have to sift through everything, because there is a ton. So we got those. And then I have these as well. This is my Gallic book page. Um, these are pages from, uh, I want to say this was like the 1500s-ish. They're very, very old um, Irish. They're, they're done and I, I believe it's called Middle Irish. Um, it's completely illegible to me, I can tell you that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, have fun. And it's funny because these were supposed to be page colored. <laughs> I, I do not know what happened with my printer. And I, I mean, I had it in RGB and sometimes printers don't like to talk to RGB and maybe that's what, did. I don't know, but they came out green and it's like, okay, well that's a coincidence, but hey, at least it's a good one. So we've got these to use if we want to have some extra background stuff. And of course I have all my scraps. These are my fancy scraps. So these are like any of the metallics or the um, coffee dyed parchment paper type stuff and, and that to have on there. Of course, we got yarn and twine and seam binding and all kinds of business. So anything we can to put kind of texture on here. Like on this one, I use some cheesecloth because, of course, um, use some yarn, use a little bit of lace. So we'll be we'll be doing that, and and we're gonna do the other two, more or less in the same kind of style as this one, um, with the little postage stamps. Because in the kit, there's a bunch of um, you know postage stamp images. And they're great for little stuff like this, just kind of filling in some of the blank spaces and whatnot. I do have real ones. Um, got just a few of them here. You know, you can use real postage stamps if you have them. I kind of tend to hoard these a little bit, but um, yeah, for this, since I used 
the, the image ones from the kit on this and, and that way if you've got the kit but you haven't gone and bought a bunch of postage stamps, um, you know, you can still do it. And then these are Tracy Fox labels and I print these onto um, sticker paper. And I can see where that went kind of over this yarn. It's not wanting to stick down all the way. So let's go ahead and hit that with some glue while I'm looking at it and thinking about it. Okay. I usually do any kind of stickers. I usually put a little extra glue, washi tape, same thing. So anyways, that's what we're going to do um, with these. So let me straighten some of this stuff up and I'll pick some pictures out of here that I think will work nice. And I will see you back in just a second. All right, so I have moved most of the stuff off the desk here. Um, I've got the pages. We'll keep this up here to kind of refer to it, especially for the size. Um, and I also use that to judge which pictures. So um, I went with this one, which is very beautiful Irish countryside painting. Um, and this one here, uh, along with this one, this is uh, Patrick Pierce, uh, Patrick Pierce in English, but um, he was one of the leaders of the rebellion in 1916, the Easter Rising. He's the one most responsible for the drafting of the, the actual um, proclamation itself. And he's the one who read it out um, that day at the, the post office where they were kind of headquartered or whatever. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's only fitting that he, he be with his document. So put those there and so what we're going to do here is we are going to take these pages and we are going to tear them. Oh, <gasps> yes, we are. So what she did, and so what I'm going to do is tore this in half like a so, and then each half in half again like this. It's super easy, but it just looks so cool and gives it so much texture. Okay. And so then you take these and you crumple them up because you want that wrinkly texture. Now, when I did this, unfortunately, I smushed it down a little too well. Um, I didn't mean to flatten it as well as I did, but I did. Oopsie. So we're just going to crumple all of these up. And this here. Do, do, do. And this one here. All right. So, and... Again, that way you can take this, you know, this book page, you can make it whatever size you want to kind of fit whatever size page you're doing. If you want it smaller or larger, if you want to go on an envelope, whatever you want to do with it. And so basically you're just going to take these and you're going to glue them one over another. So we'll use this as kind of a size template. Now with this, I did use the PVA glue um, because, you know, the glue sticks real good at, at doing stuff that's nice and flat, right? But this isn't going to be flat. It's got a lot of lumps and bumps and stuff to it. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on here. And we're going to lay this down over here, kind of making it the width that we want it and lining up the bottom part. Sure we are. Jeez. It begins. Okay. So there's that part there. And then same with this here. Um, since I did it that way, we'll do it this way, I think, on this one. A little bit of glue on this. And again, I'm going to kind of put this here just so I have the, the width correct so it's coming out looking like a, you know, a square. Okay, put those on there. And then same with this. We're going to take this and again, I'll line it up with this. And so I'll go about to here. And we'll take our glue and put it on here. You don't have to go like right up to the edge. You want this to be messy. You want it to have texture. You want it to, you know, look interesting. Um, and if you, you put everything down exactly, it's not going to, although that's, that's bugging me. So yeah, we'll put it on there. Okay. So we have this now, right? So then what we're going to do is we are going to hit it with some distress ink. And definitely do the edges of it. Now on her, she took and um, did some ink blending techniques on it to give it an overall color. Um, I would rather the, the images that I'm putting on here, you know, be the, the main focus of it. So I'm just going to not do that. 
on mine. Now if you take this and you go really light over it, you can kind of pick up a lot of those wrinkles and accentuate them too. So, okay, so there's that one. And then I will do this a little bit more because that's going to bother me. Okay, so I will fast forward and I will do the other one and I will be right back. So now we've got our two little page things. And so we are going to have our um, images on here. So with these, I do like to tear the edges of them. I just I like the way it looks better generally on here. So we'll do that. I'm going to have to find my cheesecloth. It's around here somewhere. But and then, of course, since I do mine on the laser printer, has, and I use the, the cheap non-branded uh, toner because that stuff's crazy expensive, but it tends to do this kind of cracking thing because toner is basically a plastic that you're kind of melting onto the paper, so um, it can have a tendency to do that. But with these, sometimes it, it works because it makes it look older, you know. So we'll have these on here. And I will tear all of these. So there's that one there. And this one, I debated going around the, the circle of the portrait, but I don't think it looked quite right on there like that. So we're going to leave it straight with the border. The stamps, though, I will not be tearing around because that's, yeah, that would be a task, wouldn't it? So you think, oh, they're smaller, it's easier. Not so much, no. I think I will go ahead and leave it straight though. <clears throat> okay, so of course now we're going to ink around all of the edges of these. Well, let's figure out what we're going to put where first. That'd be smart. Okay, so we have these two here and this one here, and then I have the little stamps. Um, so, you know, I, I think it only fitting that um, the stamp that has his picture on it. Um, be on here as well. So that's a good one there. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I think that's them. Let me check see if I have any other ones. Okay, so I did find a couple more um, stamps from the real stamps that I thought would be would be good for these as well. Um, of course, this being the Irish Republic flag. Um, this is Sackville Street in, in Dublin. And then this one is like this, um, kind of like a little it's like a little hut sort of thing that I thought would be good over here on this one. And I think we'll do this on this one. So on here, 
Yeah, maybe just that one. That'll work. I always have to kind of keep myself from going uh, overboard with these things because I totally do. You know, and I would like to keep a tiny bit of the book page <laughs> behind these because that's half the fun. But, all right. So now that we have these and I've decided on which ones I want, I'm going to go ahead and ink everything. So I will fast forward as I do that. to this one. Um, this one, see, can you really see how that, I mean, just putting the ink on there is what did that. That's just the most annoying. I did switch toners from this toner to a different one, but they're still the generic. But yeah, that's just, it's weird. Sometimes it looks cool though, so we'll leave that. But um, with this one, I do want to do the um, wax on the outside. This is going to be kind of a gold color, um, just to sort of help differentiate it from the back since the color does match doesn't have quite as much you know like this is a painting so it, it'll jump off but these don't jump quite as much put this on here i love this stuff it's so great um she just switched over to having this stuff come in these tubes that i guess i don't know it's good to keep it longer i don't know what the the reasoning behind that was and it's it's kind of nice i mean it's it's a lot more fluid the stuff but yeah I just it doesn't quite work as good for me I don't know and now of course you can't get them in these anymore but luckily this stuff lasts for ages so I'll, I'll be okay with that I think <clears throat> on this one I used um, the the leftover deli paper which I'll probably use on that as well but um, on these ones I didn't have these when I when I did that one um, I think I want to put some of this back behind here. Just trying to see. I think that one would look best. Um, just kind of tear a little bit off. Just kind of like a little accent to give it a little extra color. And if you can hear the paper crinkling in the background, the end of the, the stuff that they put in the Amazon boxes, my cat has decided that's hers now. And yeah, so she's... She's making that home. <laughs> She's enjoying the heck out of that. All right, so about like that'll work. And then on this one, of course, um, I'm going to use the Irish Gaelic because, uh, among other things, Patrick Pierce was a teacher, um, and he's the one behind the quote that I have in the, the book, in the kit, um, Charanchenga Chaganonam. It's a uh, country without a language is a country without a soul. So he was very much an advocate of Irish being allowed to speak Irish Gaelic and it being taught in schools and things. So I think it's only fitting that we put some of this on here for him. So put it like that. Yeah. And as will come as a no surprise whatsoever, I might eat the edges of these. <laughs> Because again, it kind of helps them stand out from things. And you notice I did ink the edges before I put the, the gold trim on it. Um, just because it, it looks nicer that way. I don't know. So I probably will do the same with this, I think. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. See if it'll benefit from that. Alright. So we've got that here. Here, or do I want it like this? I think I want it like this. Yeah. Okay. About like that. Um, put that there. And we'll put that there. On here. And with these, whenever I do these, where I'm going to do, since I have three signatures, I kind of like to have. If I'm doing something fun like this, I like to have one for each. Um, I generally will do them all at the same time, just so that. Thematically, they kind of are similar. So with this, I'll go up here, and I, yeah, I do kind of tend to go 
from right to left when I do like angled stuff. I'm, I'm not sure why that is. Okay, so have that there. And then let's get some fancy business. So I definitely want some of that. And I do have some gold. I'll have some of that. And this, oops, don't think the blue would go. And that gold one. That should do. Okay. So, let's see. I always like to have a bit of metallic as well. Kind of along the bottom. Instead of this one here. Mm. It's very pretty, but you know, it kind of doesn't, doesn't really do it. So, do this and I'll tear it in half. So that way I've got the, the torn edge. Um, Part of stuff for texture because uh, the top edge will probably be hidden by something else. So, oopsie, there we go. So, yeah, take the ends off of that. Okay, that can go in that one and this one. So, this was it's kind of like this, you know, where you've got that other half of it. And we, so I just fling it. Um, so I'll kind of take this and I'll kind of tear some of that because you can um, you know, put stress ink on it, but it, it would look, it just looks terrible that way. This may be too narrow to, to use once I get done with this, but we'll see. Hopefully it won't be. Okay, and luckily it's very thick paper, so that just basically pulled like a whole layer off, but it's totally fine. Okay, so we use that on that one. And then, I want that, I want this. Let's see. I'll tear some of this off. We definitely want it that way because that's where all the sparkly is. We can go there. Let me put that there. No, let's put, let's use this on there. And it's just a little tiny bit. I mean, this is, you know, a great way to use up all your scraps and stuff too is in decorating. But then again, you end up creating more because then you end up saving, you know, this. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make myself throw these away. I kind of don't want to, but I'm going to do it. There we go. They're thrown away. So I'll put these back. And then I've got my um, scraps pile here. Bring it over to show you. I have a big old scraps pile of, of fabric and whatnot. And um, so I do have some pieces of lace. Um, I have cheesecloth. I've got this ribbon, which I really like. That might look nice on that other one there some more lace here so okay at a certain point you do kind of have to start taping taping things down. really you have to start gluing things down you have to find your words and then use them um, just to kind of see where you're at so with the cheesecloth and stuff I know I will put it above um, this so we'll take the main pieces off and I'll try to keep them somewhat the way I had them it, it will change I promise you um, so I think we'll do this. I'm going to tear this on this side too, because I just, for whatever reason, I don't want it weighted down on the bottom, but I don't want the, you know, the cut edge. So let's tear this. That way the wedge can go from top to bottom instead of bottom to top, because it just, I don't know, it just looks better to me that way. Having said that, I'll probably make it not a wedge here in a second. And I just did. Yay. Okay. So. Seriously, fine. Okay, so we'll put this on here first, I think. And that's, um, I think it's vellum. Is this vellum? I'm fairly sure it's vellum. Um, if it's not, it's some kind of tracing paper. So we'll put a little bit of glue. You just kind of, I mean, you do have to be careful because, yeah, you can see the glue underneath it, but I really don't think that's going to be a factor in this one, so I don't really care about that too much. 
stick this one down here. And then we're going to put this one on top of that and, and I'll have the one going across the bottom over this, I think. That'd be nice. And yes, it's book page text over book page text, but who cares? I like the way it looks. All right, so this one, we're going to ink this because I don't want that white core of paper just kind of ruins everything, you know? put this across the bottom and then we'll kind of see where we're at is this one and there we go I'm actually gonna do the same over here and again I, I do tend to do these kind of in a mass make style generally um, just because it's it's easier for me that way not like I, you know, am trying to do this with a schedule or something. I'm not, but... It just seems to kind of be easier for me that way, you know. It might be the ADD, because, you know, I'll finish one, then I'll go start the next one. I'm like, okay, what the hell did I do on that one? So, yeah, doing them concurrently helps if you have the attention span of a gnat on crack. So I'll put that there. And the same with this. You definitely want to ink this. Because this has a lot of the, the white core showing still, even though I removed most of it. I didn't want to, you know, completely destroy it trying to remove the rest of it, so. Okay. Do the same with this. And then with these, you know, kind of as you put stuff on them too, it ends up starting to flatten it out, so. The ones that she did definitely had more texture to them because she didn't fiddle with them as much as I'm fiddling with them. So, all right, let's put our focal points back on here. And then that way we can sort of see what else we want in the way of like cheesecloth and, and that sort of thing. Here, this here, so oh, let's see, this might look cool. Down here, strip of that, maybe instead of cheesecloth. I just, I put cheesecloth on so many things, but it just, it looks so good. I can't help it. Okay. Oh, these are really small bits. Wow. Okay, so maybe do that one there. Hmm. If we put that there and put a stamp on it, no. That's a bit, a little bit too much, I think, for that one. So I love this and I, I determined to use it, but we'll see. All right, so let's see, I don't know if that would kind of... Maybe this with this on top. Nope. It's not working for me. Yeah, I think we're going to end up with the cheesecloth. Just goes with everything. It's great. So we'll have this here. And I think we'll use this little bit of lace up here. And then, I don't want to use a full thing, do I? No, let's maybe cut this in half then. That's just a little, little much, but I'm still going to use yarn up here on the top, so. All right, so I think that looks good. So now we can start sticking that stuff down. So 
We can use PVA glue where we're doing paper to paper, but when we do the lace, we're going to use the fabric tack for it just because it's fabric, so it's uh, a little more secure of a bond. So I'm just going to put glue a decent amount on here. And press this down. And you know, since this is textured because it's been crumpled up, it's not going to stick down perfectly, but it doesn't need to. Um, that gives it kind of a little more personality. So normally I would let the image stick down the cheesecloth. However, um, not enough image is going to be going over the cheesecloth on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit down here. Not sure if you can hear it, but my apologies about any plane noise because, of course, they've decided, oh, you're going to do a video? You haven't done one in a while? Let's fly right over your house 15 times. Okay, fine. You do that. Actually, let's put this down here as well whilst we are at it. kind of up at the top and then we'll go back and put the line of this here because I knew if I tried to put it on the, <laughs> the lace itself that was just not going to work well at all. Okay. There we go. All right. So now we go back to this. on here. And then these, and then we'll see, you know, what if anything else we want to put on there after this, but I think just the yarn is going to do it. So, is that up here? And we'll see, I may need to put Fabri-Tac, you know, let's go ahead and just do that. Since it's going over the fabric right here, and I can already see it arguing. So I'll put a nice little blob of it there, sort of hold it down. But not long enough to get stuck to it. <laughs> it's always the difficult part for me. It's, it's not sticking myself to all the things because I do that all the time. Okay, and then this one can kind of go in this little gap here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to sit this over here. We're going to let this kind of dry a little bit. We'll do this one here real quick. And we'll do the cheesecloth first, just because it's going to kind of go under a little bit, I think, like it did on this one. We'll just do a little line of it for the cheesecloth there. I do want to have some of the little bits kind of extending down over the fancy paper. And then a little bit here for the lace. You, know, you can always go back and, and add a little bit more here and there if it it's not quite sticking the way you want it to, obviously. Okay. There we go. Okay. And of course it's still sticky. <sighs> Get this one here stuck down. And that's how, you know, a lot of the decorating of the ephemera and stuff. I tend to do is because this I would do an envelope the same way as this and all of that. I like to have lots of layers and lots of stuff. That's why I put so many pictures in the, the kit was so that you had lots of things to play with. And then of course as I was playing with it I went that's not nearly enough stuff and that's why I came out with the add-on and then later the papers and postcards and 
and whatnot. Um, these papers here, the ones that, that went all weird <laughs> with my printing, um, when I can, and I, I can't make any promises on this one just because, you know, my work's not going to ease up until about July, <laughs> maybe, August. Um, once it does, I have more time to, to do stuff and, and play in Photoshop and whatnot um, after work. Right now, after work, I have time to just eat and stare off blankly into space going, oh God, it's going to happen again tomorrow, isn't it? Because um, apparently it does that five days a week. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little tricky for me to do any of that kind of stuff when I'm that tired and, and believe me, it would come out garbage anyway. But I do have a kit, several of them that I'm going to do, um, in Irish and Scottish, um, and I'm probably going to do the Welsh one as well. I think I've almost got enough stuff. I've got some really cool um, book pages that have lots of pictures uh, for Wales, which oddly enough were sent to me by a very nice lady in Dublin. <laughs> so hey, take it where you can get it, right? But um, I will be doing a kit with more of the medieval style manuscripts and things. So kind of like the book kit that I did for the miniatures where it, it uses the real manuscripts to make the, the book pages in it. Um, these will be larger book pages that you can then use that have this type of script and and whatnot and, and they won't print out green, you know, unless your printer is like mine. So, okay, so we're going to let those dry for a few minutes and then I will be right back and we'll see what else we want to do to them and see what else needs to be glued back down because, you know, again, the texture tries to pop stuff up. So, see you back in a minute. All right, so everything seems to be dry. I did put a little bit more under there to kind of stick it down and sort of, you know what, let's leave that. Yeah, I was thinking of trimming this, but I kind of like it sort of hanging over there a little bit. Okay, so now we have these and I do have my, my yarn. I used yarn on that there. Um, so I have some more of that here. And yeah, I think I'll use the darker to put maybe kind of along here so it uh, adds a little bit of texture of stuff. Um, I don't think I want to go all the way down on that, so maybe just like a little bit of this one. I'll look on there. Yeah, a little bit of that one. And we'll do a little bit of this one on here. Okay, and so when I put this down on here, instead of gluing it, because this yarn has its you can already see how it's starting to come sort of unraveled. It's got like a, a little thread around it that holds the whatever you call the stuff they make yarn out of. I was just looking at it on um, Amazon yesterday. I fell down a rabbit hole of fancy yarn business, you know, and, and they had the, the actual stuff, but whatever the heck it's called. This will sort of unravel over time, gives you some really cool textures. So what I did with it is I just used my little Tim Holtz tiny attacher stapler it has little small staples um, and I just sort of went across it in a couple spots and, and stapled it down and it'll hold it well enough. You know, it's not like we're going to be yanking on it or anything. And same with this one. It's always good to add a little texture to things when you can. Make it more interesting. Okay, so there we go. So I think... I think those are pretty well done. Yeah, I don't think they need the labels. Maybe this one. So we'll look in my my Tracy labels here. See what I have. I like the ones that have the, the writing on them, especially if you can't read it very good. So it could say anything, you know. Or the ones with just like the numbers. I just printed a whole bunch more of them off too, because I was getting low. <laughs> I love having these. They're just fun. Usually use them for um, more of like the tags and stuff, but... Oh, what do we have that would fit? So a lot of these are kind of large, and some of them are legible. They're more like, um, like science labels or for fabric stuff or specimens or stuff like that, but... I could put that one there, I guess. Yeah, yes, no, maybe so. 
Let's see, I've got some small ones with numbers. Put that on the other one. Here, let's do this one. We'll do that one. That one's kind of a little bit smaller. I'll put this up here. And these are, are really fun. I, I ended up making mine just because they're expensive, really, to, to get, as, as most handmade things are. Um, but they're just great to, to keep the stuff in because you can actually see it, um, which is half the, you know, if you have a lot of ephemera, half the time you don't use it because you don't realize you have it because you don't see it. Um, and I used overhead transparency um, sheets to do this in there. So far, they're holding up really sturdy. Um, my first ones I did, I did with, I think I used vellum on it. And it did okay, but it's... It is kind of delicate and of course when you sew through paper it's not like cloth where it's going to mend itself essentially it's you're perforating it now and so it has a tendency to rip a little bit easier you don't want to go through all that work and, and bind that in a little book and everything and then have it turn around and rip on you you know so yeah if you do these on sticker paper it makes it very very easy to just go boop stick them on and again you can put glue underneath it in theory that one will be fine I say as, you know, the next time I go look at it, it's coming up like this, but this had other stuff underneath it, so I'm not terribly surprised. So, okay, so we have these done, so let's bring our journal back out and figure out where we want these. And we'll do one in each signature and just find a spot for them. So, yeah, like I was saying, I was thinking of maybe putting it on here because there's not a heck of a lot we're going to be doing on the the mulberry pages just because they're they're not crazy delicate but they're delicate enough so it, it sort of gives you some visual interest there one on that side or one on this side yeah, actually i'm kind of liking it on this side i go on this side i don't know i don't know what i want yeah we'll do it on this side here it's just when you when you look at these books, your your eye is going to tend to go to the right a lot more. So I, I end up putting stuff a little heavy to the right. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac on this because I want to hold it down really good. And of course, it's got um, you know all the wrinkles and stuff like that. So this will this will really help keep it down. Let me just put the Fabri-Tac on here. Be generous but not too crazy because we don't really want it to show on the other side if it does well then we're just going to put something on that side then but put that down and press down hold that fabric great because it it grabs pretty quick since it's got that acetone base um, it evaporates fairly fast on the other side and kind of smush that's not doing too bad Okay. Sometimes when you put stuff down, you'll kind of see, oh, here's where I put all the glue, but it's not doing it too terrible. And we don't necessarily have to put these, you know, on this first mulberry page in each three. We can we can decide where each one goes individually, but this one didn't have very much going on up towards the front, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up here. All right, so let's go to our next signature here and see what we got. And this one, I think maybe we'll go a little more towards the back. That's the fun part of doing all this. Um, now, if we had done it where we were going to use these, say, as a pocket, I wouldn't really use this as a pocket or a tuck um, without backing it um, with some kind of paper, just because, you know, these are glued together and everything, so it's going to make it likely to tear as you're putting stuff in and out um, so oh, there's, that one might be good let's see there let's put you or maybe we'll put this on the yeah we'll put this on the dictionary page I think oh. it's also the hard part is deciding where you want to put things once you start doing this and just making sure that you're keeping it even. Hmm. 
Oh, you put it here. That'll cover up. I mean, it's got frogs on there that aren't really... <laughs> don't make sense. Well, no, because then this is kind of blending in with that. Yeah, we'll put it on this one. So, so far, I'm a liar because it's going in the same place as the other one. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how the third one does. So, we're getting our Fabri-Tec on there. And press it into place. I'm doing it kind of high up towards the top just in case you, know, you want to do anything. You can you can put like a piece of of coffee dyed paper down here for journaling or you know whatever you want with it. We can just leave it like this, but you know you don't want to put everything in the center of everything because then it starts looking a little too you know, it's not chaotic enough. You just gotta have controlled chaos. That's the key. Kind of like having small children. It's controlled chaos. All right, and now we're gonna do this last one here. So with this one, this is the one we did these pockets in. So it has some fancy stuff. So maybe we'll try to move this kind of towards the center of things. Let's see, we'll see what looks best. I don't think I want it on that. And, you know, we don't, I mean, you could put this here and this here, but that's, it's, it's too many similar things, I think, next to each other. So, what we're going to put in here. Yeah. Okay. So, as with the others, we're going to fabric tack this down. And then once we're done putting these in here, I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, edit the video and see how long it is to see if there's any other maybe little small things. So there's a lot of small things that we can do. We've still got the, um, the little divider tabs to put on there. And they're, you know, obviously optional. Everything's optional, but you um, can put the little divider tabs on and or we can make little paper clips. There's always a bunch of little stuff we can we can make and put in here. And I do have some stuff um, that I didn't make on camera, but I did do videos where I, I show you how to do it. Maybe I'll bust those out. Let me take a look at those. Okay, there we go. I think that looks really good. All right, so I'm back from editing the previous bunch of stuff. Um, and yeah, it's plenty long enough. So um, we will wait on doing the other things. We've got our, um, I don't know, these would be page clusters, maybe? I don't know, large page clusters, because that's kind of what they are, I guess. So we have those in there, and they're looking swell. Um, so I will show you, though, these are the um, pieces that I was talking about. So I had done a video for my... Um, classical and vintage women kits um, where we used junk mail envelopes and made these little pocket envelopes here. So it's got the window, um, courtesy obviously of the junk mail envelope, and you can put stuff in there like so. Um, so I made these and then with the off cuts of making those I made these smaller pockets. So these do probably still need a little something on them, some kind of focal point, but these are just regular you know, pockets that you're going to tuck stuff in. and and put down flat. Um, whereas these, I did the back of them so they can go in either using a paper clip or a, um, you can put a hinge on it, make it a flip out sort of thing. I'll show you here. So if we were going to do it, say, you know, here, put a hinge and it'll, it'll flip out this way. Or you can just glue them down and, and say, oopsie on the back, you know, whatever. Doesn't really matter, but um, so we'll probably do those next and figure out, you know, where these are going to go. It's bad enough that I've I've messed with my myself, and I have four, but I have three signatures. So yeah, that's going to be it's going to be fun um, to figure out. But we can work on those next time. Perhaps maybe some of the um, 
covered paper clips. I don't know, something small-ish because we're, we're getting there and go through some more of the ephemera stuff for the kit, make some of the tags, that sort of thing. You know, whatever we can cram into a decent amount of time. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you make some of your own um, of the page clusters because they are really a lot of fun. And like I said, I will put the video, it was Janice Zate, um, but the video she did was for Graphic 45. So I'll put the Graphic 45 video link to that specific video and then her YouTube link as well down below. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one then. Okay, Bye.